What's up guys, I'm BTC and today we're talking about how to deal with barriers in the new meta. Of course, everyone knows by now that barriers have been nerfed substantially and while new team comps are still being created and the meta is still shifting, barriers are still very much a part of the game. Some of the common tank comps you'll see right now are using Orisa and Sigma still, or perhaps Reinhardt and something else, but regardless, the barriers still need to be dealt with in one way or another. One of the things that has changed with this latest patch is how you as an individual player can affect the barriers on the enemy team. For example, a month or so ago, if you had tried to attack an Orisa barrier by yourself, then it was largely considered a waste of time. For most characters, by the time you were able to destroy the barrier, Orisa could easily just drop a new one and all of your work was for nothing. With Reinhardt and Sigma, it was a little different because they needed to recharge it, but it was still largely a waste of time to try and attack the barrier by yourself. When you throw in double barrier team comps into the mix, well then attacking the barrier was almost always useless, which is why a lot of the strategy against double barrier was just simply going around it and avoiding it. On a very coordinated team, however, or in the pro level, you would see teams that would try to focus down these barriers using something like a Bastion or possibly a Junkrat. But on the competitive ladder where everyone is pretty much doing their own thing, the double barrier was better avoided than trying to destroy it. However, that is no longer the case. As you can see in some of the examples on the screen right now, Characters like Roadhog can easily destroy an enemy barrier. For him, it only takes four hits to destroy that Orisa barrier. Other characters like Soldier, Hanzo, and even Baptiste, as I showed yesterday, are also able to very quickly burn through those barriers. And of course, having multiple people attacking the barrier will obviously destroy it much faster, but even one player on your team is now able to be quite effective destroying enemy barriers. This doesn't mean that it should always be just one player trying to destroy the barrier. Obviously, having multiple teammates will make the job all that much quicker, but what I've seen on the competitive ladder is that people tend to still be stuck in the mindset of not attacking a barrier because they just kind of perceive it as being a waste of time. And this isn't just in the lower bracket either, this is in the upper bracket as well. If you have a better target, like a support or a DPS that's out of position, then yes, by all means, attack that target instead, as you will get more value from it. But with the new changes, Anytime you see an enemy barrier on the screen and there's nothing else for you to prioritize, then you absolutely should be attacking that barrier because there's nothing else to hit and it will give you quite a bit of advantage for your team destroying that enemy barrier now. I'm sure many of you have heard the term poke damage and this is prior to the actual fight happening. Both teams are just kind of throwing out some attacks to try to build up a little bit of ultimate charge or test the waters before the big fight starts. Maybe the attacking team is trying to get a lucky pick somewhere. Uh, because of the recent changes, however, this type of damage, the poke damage, has become much more valuable, particularly for the attacking team. Defending tank players now need to be far more careful with how they use their barriers. Simply standing in the choke point with the barrier up is no longer a good idea. With a character like Reinhardt, he's going to lose a lot of the barrier strength and be forced to move to the side to recharge. This gives the attacking team an opportunity to move in and take that position. In the case of Orisa, it's even worse, as using a barrier too early is incredibly bad. It can be destroyed so easily now by just even poke damage that the attacking team can quickly destroy it and then rush in while the defenders have nothing to protect them. I'll talk more about this particular topic in an upcoming video about how defenders need to change their strategy in order to be more effective. But for now, let's go back to the barriers. Uh, th and this isn't just a thing for the DPS players either. As I mentioned, Roadhog is great at dealing with the new barriers and to a lesser extent, some of the other tanks as well, Orisa, Sigma, Zarya, and D.Va. They, obviously, Winston can't damage the barriers, but you know, this point still stands that the tanks can deal damage to the barriers and be quite effective. 
and also the support players can be effective at attacking the barriers as well. Particularly true at the beginning of any engagement when they don't really need to worry about doing too much healing, right? They can just focus on doing some damage to try to break that barrier and then as your team begins taking damage, they can then shift their focus onto healing their team instead of attacking. If there's nothing to heal and there's no other better targets, then you absolutely should be prioritizing that enemy barrier and putting as much damage into it as you possibly can. What usually ends up happening is whatever team is doing that will end up winning the fight because whichever team, whether you're attacking or defending, whichever team loses the barrier first, loses the fight. I realize that getting your team to properly coordinate on the competitive ladder is not the easiest thing to do, and half of them might not even be in voice comms, right? However, at the start of each match, remind your team to be careful with their own barriers and to focus down those enemy barriers. Tell them that if they don't have any other target, then there's no reason why they shouldn't be attacking the barrier. Just keep attacking it and it will allow your team to advance and take better positions. You'd be surprised how effective this can be. Now, obviously, not every team that you get on is going to be able to do this kind of a strategy. Some characters, like Winston, can't damage the barriers at all, and then you have other ones like Doomfist, Genji, Widowmaker, who just aren't very good at it, and some others that are also pretty bad as well. If it's the case that your team is mostly made of those types of characters, obviously you don't want to try to destroy the barrier. You're better off just going around it and ignoring it. However, if you're on a team that's even a little bit mixed, then it's still probably going to be a good idea to destroy the barrier. So let's say you have a Reinhardt and a Hammond, and then a Soldier and a Tracer, and maybe a Baptiste and a Zenyatta or something like that, right? So in that case, you're going to have Hammond and Tracer who really don't care about the barriers all that much, and Reinhardt who can't do anything about them either. But you still have a Soldier, a Baptiste, and a Zenyatta. And if you're going against, let's say, uh, it's just a single barrier Reinhardt, or it's only an Orisa with like a, a Roadhog or something helping, then you absolutely want to destroy that barrier because the Soldier, the Baptiste, and the Zenyatta would be able to just tear through that Orisa barrier in no time at all. So you really have to look at what your team comp is, but oftentimes, there are still going to be a lot of cases where destroying the barrier is the better solution. And again, whichever team loses the barrier first ends up losing the fight, typically. The overall message that I want to give in this video and just really drive it home is that you have to change the mentality that we've had previously when the barriers were super strong. Attacking the barriers now is no longer a waste of time. Quite the opposite, in many situations, attacking the barriers is one of the most beneficial things that you can do to help your team win. However, do keep in mind that you can get trapped into a bad habit of only attacking the barriers, and that's not good either, right? Like, there are many cases where you want to attack the barriers, but just make sure that you're not focusing on that when you should be focusing on the enemy players, because ultimately, you need to take out the players, not the barriers. Thanks for watching, and if you'd like to see more, subscribe and hit that bell so you don't miss anything. Also, come hang out in my Discord server and my Twitch live stream. Special thanks to my Patreon supporters. If you'd like to see what kind of cool VIP rewards you can get, check the links down below. And remember, always, always blame the controller, because it's never your fault.